What is going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back with another episode of Some Unpopular Opinions. I'm here again with Brian Daigle, and we are going to react to some of your unpopular opinions sent to us via Twitter. Brian, round two, are you ready? I, mate, I am very, very ready. I was All born right. ready for this day. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it, and let's, let's, go, let's start big. And this is from Sergeant Sonny, and he says... I would not be upset if we were knocked into the Europa League. I believe we could 100% win the competition based on the teams who made it to the semi-finals last season. Conte probably wouldn't mind winning the Europa League as it would be his first European title. Um, if I offered you, as of right now, a Europa League win for next season, would I take it? Would you take it? Yes. You would take it? I would take it. And the reason I say that is I think the main thing for Tottenham Hotspur right now is... So we're in the Champions League though right now. You wouldn't have rather... So no, do you know what? Let, let, this was to say. Right now, don't, don't get me wrong. If you said Champions League win or a Europa League win right now, you know what I'm choosing. But I think right now, I don't know if we're strong enough to win the Champions League. For me... Where, where I've seen this we're getting back into the Champions League is now doing like what we do with Poch, getting in there regularly and having that Champions League revenue come in and building and building and building. Um, I think just going into it, I think we'll get out of the group stages, mm -hmm. but obviously get further progressing may be an issue and the finances obviously in the Champions League are more, but I believe with what this guy's saying, with the Europa League is winnable. Not, I'm not saying, oh, please just go out of the Champions League so we can win it. I'd love us to go as far as we can. But for me, this year with the Champions League, is just getting out of the group stage, get as far as we can, obviously try and get to the final, but it's to build and make sure we're there next season and the season after that and the season after that and hopefully with Conte and new additions coming in all the time to freshen up, build up, ready for an assault in the Champions League. If I gave you an option, either we finish top of our Champions League group and we have a favourable last 16, but we don't know what's in the quarter, semis and final, obviously. Probably very hard teams, but I'm offering you either... We top our Champions League group yep. and we have a favourable last 16 draw or we finish bottom of our... Or we finish third in our Champions League group but we win the Europa League. Are you choosing the Europa League win? Oh, Jesus. I don't think we've got enough time in this video <laughs> to, to answer, answer that one. Listen, I'd love to see us go as far as winning the Champions League or as far. But the, the main thing for me, and I've been saying it for many years, I want to see us win a trophy. I want to see armpit hair, shirts, uh, arms raised high... So, I can I as much as I want a trophy and a European trophy, and obviously I'd be very happy if we did win Europa League. Let me let me, let me before we do that. Everything you just said, everything you just said, but we beat Arsenal in the final. Yeah, then obviously choose Europa League. Oh, I have to choose Europa League. Oh, that, that we, <laughs> that, they would never live that down. I, exactly. I mean, that that, that, I think that may be the carrot that convinces a lot. To be fair, if we drop into Europa League and then somehow then we stop Arsenal winning it by beating them in any round, yep. that might be worth it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, and as we're looking at this, Sim, what do, you re do you realistically see us winning the Champions League? No, but you know, you, when we got to the final, you'd probably say No, I completely agree. Completely agree. But You never know. Look, Champions League... Um, First of all, luck of the draw, and second yeah. of all, um, we are look. We we have play, we have a team of players who, a lot of them know what it takes to get to a final. Um, maybe with the right signings, we might be up there with some of the best teams. Who knows? We have to. I just need to say this isn't me saying I want to go out of the Champions League. This isn't me saying. I'm he, just he saying. He said he would not be. Would you be upset if we were to go out of the Champions League? It depend on the manner. If we just scrape third, like on the last day, of the last day of the round, and just pit fourth to. Th then, yeah. I, 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 would you be upset or would you be like, all right, let's just go in Europa League now? Or would you be like, oh, God, what a failure we've we'll been done no, I'd be, I'd be the first. I'd be like, oh, no, what a failure. Fun. Okay, let's just make sure we go for this full fossil. But we've got to remember, we have to take into account, as we know, like, like, like which, the comment said, is Conte's Achilles heel seems to be Europe and play. So they did get to the Europa League final with Inter. They, so there we go, there's a the final. Second, but would that not be seen as a failure by, by for, for Conte surely if he's got people who went out of the Champions League I, I guess not if he won the Europa League yeah probably. exactly and then what people but at the time say, it definitely would be it would be seen as a failure well again it depends how we do in the market um, but if we were to finish third and win a Europa League I've been saying all season or, or this time that I would take third and the FA Cup as, a, as progress and it's a trophy and we're back in the top four Top three in Europa League? Hell yeah. And we're back in the Champions League anyway. Even if we didn't have a, a, a strong finish to the season and finish in the top four, which I think we will. But yeah, I, I, I would say... Um, I wouldn't say... 
like he's saying that I wouldn't be too fussed. I would be. Slow. At the time, I would be. But obviously, you can redeem yeah, it by you, winning you the greatest. We'd have to win it probably. Exactly. The guys, That's the thing. We would have to win it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next up. Great comment though. Yeah, it was. It's an interesting comment. Next up is A J um, Win T X I. He says. We should be going for Nkunku over other forwards. He can play across the whole front three, can play in a midfield three, has insane output, eight goals and assists in six Champions League games and 34 goals and assists in 33 Bundesliga games this season. Ridiculous. He's a level raiser. We need to challenge at the top. Um, don't think that's unpopular, but he has just signed a new contract with a re report, yeah, reported 60 million euro release clause. With that kind of output, he's a no-brainer, isn't he? Surely, yeah. with somebody, he's someone who can play so versatile and, and has got a ridiculous goal output for Leipzig. Well, for me, if this is true and he has got a 60 million release fee, um, that chucks Richarlison and Rafinha out the window and just pay 60 million to get this dude in. Just go pay the money. He's, the clubs have got... A, if it is reported that this is true at 60, I would give up on Rafinha and Richarlison and just go for him. I know he's not premiership proven, but those stats and what he's capable of, that's... I, I, and I he said, can play the cam, left, right. He can play a lot of different positions. I, I was on... Who shows it on? Sean Butler's on the Spurs talk show. And he gave a list of them, a str possible strikers, and he was the one I picked immediately. So, so for he me... He has played up front a few times. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would love to see him at the club. So I, if, if the 60 million is there, I'd go pay it right now. All right, interesting. Uh, next up, we have Conte Connoisseur, and he says, I've got a great one for you. Benoit Asuakoto was a better left-back than Regulon. <laughs> so, uh, people know my feelings on Regulon. I want him out of the club. Uh, 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 and we're talking left-wing back, yes, did you say? Just left-back, he said. Okay. Well, Regulon played his first so, so, Yeah, back. so uh, I, th I, th I think Regulon's a very good left-back. I just don't think he's a very good left-wing back. Is he better than Akoto? So, I had a theory with Akoto. You know how David Harris always talks about Harry Kane's hair? See if you remember, and see if people here remember. When Okotu had his hair in braids, yeah. he always played well. Whenever he came out with the afro, yeah. he was woeful. <laughs> he was like, me and my dad used to go to games or watch it. It was like, right, he's having a good game or he's having a bad game. Um, Okotu was an anomaly to me. He just didn't like, he was open, he didn't like football. I, I, would, I would have, a, I would have an uh, Asu Okotu over a regular. I think quality-wise... You could argue Okoto because he, I kind of felt like even though he was good for us, he still played at like 80% all the time because he's just so chill. Yeah. Like, he, like he, he, you always get the feeling he's got more to give. Whereas I feel like Regulon's always going at 100 miles yep. an hour. But Okoto still, even at 80%, always had a very good pass on him, a very good cross on him, was pretty good in the tackle as well. So I think quality wise, I'd have to say Okoto probably yeah. is better than Regulon. But Regulon. I think you'd probably always want someone like Regulon just because of the effort he gives rather than Okoto, who always tried hard, but always gave you wanting more ways. With Regulon, you kind of had get the feelings he leaves everything out on the pitch. Yeah. But quality-wise, I do agree. I think Okoto is probably better. Um, Drew970 says, We will finish above Liverpool. This Champions League final is the uh, loss, is the beginning of their downfall. I mean, they were very, they were extremely overrated. The easiest Champions League run to the final, not scoring any goals in any cup final they've played in, didn't win any games against the Premier League top four. How, what, what would you rate our chances of finishing above Liverpool? Slim. Slim. I can see where this guy's coming from. Um, well, you know, we had a bit of a downfall after we uh, lost the Champions League. I know they kind of also lost the Champions League final one of the next year, but like uh, they did lose it one 0 in a really poor, in a poor, pretty, pretty poor performance. And yep. you know, Mane's leaving now. Um, players are getting a bit older. Henderson's reaching the end of his career. Um, like, are there, are, you know, Mane's approaching? I think he's thirty now. Are we seeing that maybe an end of a cycle? Or is that too, way too early to say that? I think they're starting to come to an end of a cycle. But what what you got to remember with Liverpool is they, they knew they were losing Su um, Suarez, Mane, and they went and smashed the bank out for Nunes. So the cover came in. Now, obviously, he's going to maybe have to take time to settle into the Premier League, whereas Mane, obviously, Mane is obviously ready to go. Like I said, Jordan Henderson reaching an age. You've got um, uh, J James Milner, uh, who signed another contract extension. This guy is just does not get any uh, older. Um, he is so fit. But... I think they are coming to an end of a cycle. I think they are. But not yet. No, I think it's just a little bit too soon. Maybe the season after next. There'll still be title, title challenges. Yeah, I think, next they season. Will. I think they will. 
And it'll be, uh, yeah, I kind of agree. I can't see us plugging the gap. Although it's been done before. Liverpool yeah. did it to City. There was a massive gap and they closed it within one one year. Um, so whether we can do the same remains to be seen. But I do find it unlikely. I wouldn't say right now um, that that's possible. Although, I have to wait and see who we get, what business we do. And if we do the right business, then I guess there is a chance with the setup we have. If, if yeah, like, like I said, if this was uh, the end of the season window shot, I'd say no. Mm -hmm. But right now, we don't know who's coming in, sir. So there could be a few marquee signings coming in, then that could drastically change the opinion. All right, next up, we have Spurs Swede. Uh, and he says, Dyer is as good as we'll get a, cent a central centre-back. Getting, for example, Koulibaly or Bremer and at, at CCB wouldn't make us a better side defensively. Dyer's leadership and organisation skills are more impactful than a better defender. Um, does that go under the radar, do you think? The fact that Dyer, it's not just his defensive quality, but his ability to communicate with the back line, the organisation we usually have when Dyer's um, there compared to when he's not there. Uh, we seem to be all over the place when he doesn't play. Um, does that maybe um, go under the radar in terms of uh, what we need in a central centre-back? Because sometimes people just think, get a better defender in and it'll sort problems. Uh, the way you've got to look at that is when we had dire out during the, the new year and everything, the defence did look a sham. Even with a Romero in, mm -hmm. the organisation, the communication was not what it was. When Emerson was out, uh, sorry, uh, Romero, right, Romero why well, I forgot that, Romero yeah. was out for the last few games, but Dyer was there. We didn't concede a goal, did we? Apart from Liverpool, the rest of the games, Burnley, Art the Filth, and well, Romero Norwich. played against Liverpool, I think he was out for the Arsenal game, yeah. So yeah, so three from, clean sheets. Three clean end. sheets in a row. Uh, and, even look, and even during the season when Romero was out for three months. Yep, he so Dyer was we were still pretty solid, although it wasn't perfect. We were yeah. still fairly solid. I, I think bang on the money with the communication and uh and everything like that, but I think if Kula Bali comes in, that that's a beast of a man. That's uh that's a really, really strong defender. But I completely agree with what this guy's talking about when it comes to the communication and everything that we... we I keep saying, you realise how badly you miss a player when he's out. Mm. And we obviously saw, compared to when Dyer was out, compared to when Romero, it looked like we missed Dyer more. But do you think in that, when if we're looking for a central centre-back, it's all good, well, and good bringing Koulibaly, but unless they have similar level of organisation leadership skills as Dyer, are we maybe selling ourselves short if we're looking to replace Dyer. That, that, that's why I think it's more important we sign a left centre-back as opposed to a centre-back, I must mm -hmm. admit. If I, I said at the end of the season, when, when you're looking at the rebuild, I think the centre-back is the least of the worry. Yes, we may want to upgrade on Dyer, but I think he is... I, I would not be disappointed if he starts the season at us. So he, he, he does have a, a lot of... Uh, uh, credit for what his uh, uh, coordination and, and communicative skills were uh, all this season. All right. Um, next one we have is uh, we'll do, our last one we'll do is Jasper, and he says Hoybier is better than Basuma and Bentancourt. <sighs> Oh, this is that, so. Hoybier is better than Basum. Better. Look, I think Hoybier is underrated for me. I think the fact that he's always near the top of all the, of all the um, very uh, a lot of very impressive sat, uh, margins, tackles, inceptions. He's usually very high up, passing and stuff like that. The way he can control games, um, running stats, all these kind of things. Um, he's always very much near the top. Uh, you got to remember, he when he first came, I don't think he missed the game for about eighteen months. I think he played every single game. And then the performances did seem to slip a bit for a time. He got dropped for one game and then he came back and he was as good as new. He's better than ever. So I think people uh, need to cut a Hoybier some slack sometimes because I think... Because, look, I think when... It, when we, I don't know what it is with Hoybier. I think it's fairly similar to Lloris, the Lloris syndrome, where Lloris, for me, what I mean by that is Lloris is a fantastic keeper. I yes. think one of the best in the league. And he'll make a clanger... And then the, sometimes when he does make a clang, it's a really bad clang, yep. and it gets focused on him. And rival fans say, "Oh, this is evidence of Lloris finished. He's yep. not good enough." But then, and then he'll go on another like 10, 15 game stretch where he's brilliant, and then he'll make another clanger. And I think Hoybier is quite similar, where but he but, but it happens in games where he's a really consistent, and then he'll do something like monumentally stupid, like a pass straight out of play, or a really bad miscontrol, or someone will just breeze past him like he's not there. Occasion like happens sometimes, and then people point to those uh, things that are easily easy to remember, 
and they think, oh, look, he's not good enough. This yep. guy's not great. But they don't see 95% of the really good work he does throughout the whole game and, and all the good passes he does because they go under the radar and they're not as eye-catching as the mistakes he makes. So I think from that point of view, uh, Hoybier is actually one of our most consistent midfielders. And I, I, I think uh, every game, usually when he has a good partner next to him, he's usually very effective. And um, to say he's better than Basuma and Bentancourt, I think he is better than Bentancourt. I'm going to say, I'm going to agree with that. Basuma, we have to see. I think the, the Basuma I've seen for Brighton is better than Hoybier. But I haven't seen him in the Spurs show, so it's hard to judge. But I think Hoybier is underrated. Oh, well, you, you know me. I, I absolutely love Pierre-Emil Hoybier. And... Uh, there's two other people, Ellie, obviously, and Kirst, whose birthday it is. Happy birthday, Kirst. Uh, love Hoybia, and I, I think he's brilliant. I think he's absolutely outstanding. Like you said, this guy's played over 100 games for the club in two years. He had one game. Do you remember even when um, Mourinho was trying to... He forced him off because he had his shin cut open, but he's still dying to get on. He is a great player, and... I don't think any of us could play 100 games straight off the bat. Like, Very uh, few the, can. The, exactly. Go and look at the Premier League and see how many players have actually done that. He is great. And the, do you know what? It's kind of like when, um, when Ledley King, when you play next to Ledley King, you played better. Mm -hmm. And I think when Hoiberg has had a reliable partner, it has brought the best out of him. And the stuff he does goes wildly underrated. Yeah. Wildly underrated. I, he, he is so marmite between fans. And, I don't, uh, and his passing's underrated. Yeah. Well. He has I, a good pass for him. You've just got to look at his really pass good, for yeah. Benton call for, for the Norwich game. Yeah, and he's, he's done it so many times. He's done it, I remember... Um, the Leeds game, he got a brilliant assist for uh, Harry Kane. Yep. For the Leicester game, that that, that assist for uh, Matt Doherty for um, Bergvine's first goal, brilliant pass. He's, he does that time and time again, those little dinked balls. And I think it goes under the radar how, how good his passing can be, only because it can be a bit erratic sometimes, yep. passing. And that and as I said, it's easy to remember his mistakes than it is his good stuff. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely see what you're saying. That I... Mm. Benton Cor's come in and definitely delivered something. The one thing he's better is transitioning straight from the back four, getting it, uh, going forward. Mm. He's definitely added that. Basuma, as you said, we don't know. We haven't seen him in a Spurs shirt. But if he can just do what he does in a Brighton shirt, it's going to be very hard to say uh, that Hoybier is better, probably on par or just slightly below Basuma. But, yeah, I think Hoybier is wildly, wildly underrated. All right, well, that's it for part two of Unpopular Opinions. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us today for this episode. Thank you, Brian, uh, for your contributions. Uh, we'll be back for another episode, so stay tuned. Like, subscribe, and comment, and as always... Come, come on, you Spurs! Spurs.